fundamental principles of humanity and impartiality kind of embed all humanitarian assistance. But they are operating principles that guide our work, the way we do business, the way we approach and we, the way we secure access, the way we prioritize and, and negotiate our approach. And those are independence and neutralities. And it is that independence and the practice of neutrality that eventually develops the trust the trust of the communities, the trust of all the parties in a conflict, and eventually allows us to have access. Once we have access, if we do a good job at identifying in an impartial way the needs, then we should really be able to actually deliver effectiveness. Effectiveness, I would say, is providing the best possible assistance and protection to the most vulnerable people in conflict or uh, in disaster. Now, when it comes to efficiency, what, what, how can we achieve uh, efficiency? Uh, and I think it has to do with the use of funds, the, 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 fact, the, the fact that we ensure that we, we reach the right people and we are efficient in, 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 in delivering the aid and the assistance that is needed that we reduce the overhead costs, uh, for instance, um, that we operate under an appropriate humanitarian architecture. This firmly neutral and independent approach is what enables the ICRC and its movement partners to be, more often than not, among the few humanitarian actors present on the modern battlefields in Ukraine, Syria, South Sudan, Yemen, or Afghanistan. For the ICRC and for the Red Cross and Red Crescent Movement, these two operational principles are essential to gain acceptance for all and therefore to get access to populations in need in some of the most adverse circumstances. We, the Lebanese Red Cross, when we talk about effectiveness, we have to think about our neutrality when we are accepted in the country, when there's an acceptance by the, all the community. Training, the recruitment of the volunteer, the recruitment is very important. The volunteer in the EMS will stay in approbation between nine months and one year to be accepted, to move. You know, Lebanon is a mosaic. You have from all religions, from all the parties, from all the community. And when you select volunteers with a strict selection to be accepted, there's a matter his Excellency talked about the trust. There's a matter of trust with the community. Because we're in the temple of humanitarianism, I want to start by quoting one of the high priests, and that is Jean Pictet. And Jean Pictet said, one cannot be at the same time a champion of justice and a champion of charity. One must choose. And the reason I point this out is because in the range of uh, uh, positions that you find or actors that you find in these very complex uh, uh, contexts that the, both speakers have, have mentioned, you have uh, actors that recognize themselves in the principles, the, the so-called dunantist actors who try to maintain, um, to put the principles at the forefront of what you do. And then you have a range of, uh, of other players who do useful and interesting work, but uh, depending on how close or how far they position themselves from the Dunantist uh, position, cannot be really uh, quantified as truly humanitarian, in my view. And um, Pictet's quote about champion of justice versus champion of charity indicates one of these types of actors, which are the actors who come to a situation with the objective of transforming the society or the place that they find, not limiting themselves to bandaging the woods, saving and protecting the lives of uh, um, civilians who are at uh, immediate risk. So if you, uh, you know, human rights is very important, but mixing a human rights agenda or a development agenda or a political agenda with uh, humanitarian work doesn't, uh, sometimes leads to uh, messy situations. And I think one of the important things for me is clarity on what your objectives are. 
uh, you may have the rhetoric of principles, but sometimes the agencies who have this rhetoric on the ground, um, and this also applies to the UN, by the way. The UN is not always neutral when it uh, uh, intervenes in, uh, in countries in crisis. So transparency and an alignment vis-a-vis -vis what they say is, is crucially important. I, I know you enough to know that you do not have your own jet, but you do have six cell phones Seven. in your pocket. Seven cell phones. <laughs> Uh, uh, is that part of this uh, effort of being neutral and impartial? Tell us the connection between the cell phone multiplicity and this effort. When you talk about uh, effectiveness, which means you need to have a strong contact with all the parties, from the government and non-government. For example, when we go to the suburb of Beirut and respond to the Hezbollah in case of need, and in parallel, the American embassy asked for a post to send ambulance. This is a neutrality and independence. So yes, the contact is to have regular contacts with all the parties to solve the problem in the field, not to arrest any ambulance, not to kidnap any case. So this is a discussion, of course, with, our, with ICRC, with the movement, with our partners. This is the communication. The communication is very important to the movement to see how we can manage in the field to protect our mission according to the fundamental principles. If you don't have this contact and this relation with all these parties in the field, you feel that always each party in the field, there's a competition, they feel that they are more vulnerable than the others. And they want to be uh, supported and helped. And this is why uh, in according to our uh, uh, mission and according to our mandate and uh, experience that we need to organize and a strong relation with all these parties to define the priority when, when we talk about vulnerable. Now, principles are principles. That's it. That's, that's the end of the discussion. However, the reality on the ground is neither black nor white. Conflicts uh, that require political efforts uh, to be resolved then can hamper neutrality or independence or the other way around. Neutrality and independence, particularly neutrality, can hamper a political solution sometimes. Independence in, in terms of, of, of natural disasters can become a burden for efficiency at some point. And I go back to the example of, of uh, the 1,500 uh, different uh, actors operating uh, in, in good faith, all of them, uh, trying to help the Philippine authorities to recover from, from the hurricane, and how much burden they became for the Filipino uh, Filipinos, uh, government because they have to dedicate and distract resources to, co to coordinate these 1,500 actors that were on the ground roaming freely like wild animals. There are uh, a number of valid criticisms to neutrality. Uh, and usually, I find these criticisms are misplaced because they're directed to the wrong uh, destinataire. Um, the ambassador mentioned that neutrality can hamper a political solution. Well, yes, but is it uh, the responsibility of humanitarian actors to find political solutions? Um, the other criticism that is often levied to principles, and particularly to neutrality, is around root causes. You guys, you're bandaging wounds, you're putting a bandage on a festering sore, but you're not addressing the root causes. Okay. But is that the role of humanitarians to address the root causes of a crisis? It is true, uh, and we don't have an answer to this, that uh, there are some crises where we've been around for 30 or 40 years, Sudan, Afghanistan. But the risk there, and why I say the destinataire is wrong, is that it's not the responsibility of the humanitarians if these crises have been going on for so long. And I want to bring this conversation to a close by acknowledging 
the expertise we had around in the panel. This is one in a series. Uh, our colleagues uh, at the Humanitarium will uh, gladly welcome you in uh, further conversations. And um, if we can turn you into champions, uh, we would love if that event has done it. At least you didn't say, let's throw away the fundamental principles. Uh, we expect that this conversation will continue this year. And in October, we are celebrating the 50th anniversary of the fundamental principles, and we count on all of you to remain the champions of those. Thank you. Thank you.